Back now to our breaking news. The House Oversight Committee releasing documents in just the last hour indicating, you know it by now, just six Americans enrolled for Obamacare on day one of the big rollout. The administration says these are not official numbers, though we should point out that everyone in the administration has thus far refused to release any official numbers. Look at it. October 1st, six people. Next day, 100. We took it down, but next day, 248. Look at that. Look at that. Uh, I actually think our graphic is wrong. I think it was October 2nd they had six people. October 3rd they went from 100 to 248. In any event, just dreadful. Uh, joining us on the phone tonight is Chief White House Correspondent Ed Henry. Ed, what do you hear from the White House on this? Well, good evening, Megan. As you say, these numbers being released by a critic of the administration in Republican Darrell Issa, but he's releasing, as you noted, notes from the administration itself. It's from their war room inside the Department of Health and Human Services. So it, it, it's their own numbers, but it appears to be sort of a draft of those numbers. A spokeswoman for Secretary Sebelius at the Health and Human Services Department, Joanne Peters, tells me tonight, quote, these appear to be notes. They do not include official enrollment statistics. We will release enrollment statistics on a monthly basis after coordinating information from different sources. They mentioned paper, online, and call centers, verifying it with insurers and collecting data from states. As the Secretary said before Congress, we are focused on providing reliable and accurate information, and we do not have it at this time due to the issues with the forms. We've heard about this before, obviously. She ended by saying we have always anticipated the pace of enrollment will increase throughout the enrollment period. That last point is something they're trying to emphasize at the White House tonight. It, you remember the president was in Boston yesterday talking about the beginning of Romney Care, where in the first month of that, and it's only one state, it's not the whole nation, obviously, they only had 123 people signing up in the first month. By month two, they had 22,000 people. By the end of year one, they had 36,000, obviously, just in one state. The key here, the bottom line is, the White House is scrambling tonight because it's yet another blow as they try to dig out from what even the president said yesterday in Boston has been an awful start to this rollout. And what we're all anticipating is sort of the next move here is they have, as you noted, have been pushing off giving us official numbers, but they said they would do it at the beginning of November. Now, will it be tomorrow, November 1st, or will they wait a few days past the weekend when they get various information coming in from all these states? Everyone waiting and anticipating that. Way. All right, Ed Henry, thank you. And I just want to show the viewers, this is, this is the document that we got, and this says... Six enrollments have occurred so far with five different issuers. Six. So you can see the whole, there was a wide war room notes. Um, this is the HHS group, war room notes, 10 to 13 a.m., and they go through uh, all the data. And that's as of 10 to the day after, six. At the beginning of the month, a number of administration figures were repeatedly asked, what are the numbers? We paid for this website, and we are subsidizing a lot of the policies. Here's Secretary Sebelius and one of her top lieutenants. How many have signed up thus far? Fully enrolled? I yep. can't tell you because I don't know. Administrator Tavener, how many people have enrolled in the exchanges? Chairman Camp, that number will not be available till mid November. And now we know why. Carl Rove served as Deputy Chief of Staff under President George W. Bush and was a senior advisor and assistant to the President. He's a Fox News contributor. Carl? Six. Uh, we shouldn't be surprised. Um, remember, uh, on the 16th of October, Delaware announced that 16 days into the program, it had finally signed up its first person. Alaska announced that as of that day, it had seven. Wisconsin said, we have less than 50. Two days later, on a Friday, Oregon announced they had zero people who had signed up. That's, that is 18 days into the, into the sign-up. Zero people who'd signed up for a private insurance plan. South Dakota announced it had 23. On Monday the 20th, North Dakota said, we have 20 who've signed up in our state, one a day for 20 days. And then they also said the Department of Health and Human Services told us not to talk about these numbers anymore. Don't tell what we've got signed up. And we just talked so to why an, should we be surprised? We just talked to an insurance uh, rep, rep who said that the insurance companies are being told not to talk about it. I mean, but six, it's so abysmal. Right. You know, the, the concern is rather great. I mean, you, you can't field a soccer team with six people. You can't field a baseball. In fact, we had them line up here in the studio. Look at this. This, these aren't these six, but this is the number. This is the number of people yeah. who signed yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, re and, and remember, Megan. Remember, Megan, they need 38,461 people a day for each and every day, Monday through Sunday, 
of the open enrollment period to get to the seven million number by the by by next uh, the end of next March. And, and, and if they uh, don't, then at this then pace, what it's happens? not going to be it's not going to happen. If they don't, what happens next? Sorry, can you hear me, Carl? That's my my question is if they're on yeah. pace not to make the seven million uh, by the end of March, then then what will happen? Well, remember, this whole Affordable Care Act was sold as a, um, we're going to provide comprehensive universal care to every American. Now, that's not true. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, even the CBO says that, Congressional Budget Office says that 30 million people in the United States will be without insurance when the Affordable Care Act is completely up and going. But if they end up getting fewer than 7 million people, in all likelihood, two things are going to happen. One is the economics of this are going to be very bad because the, the people who are most likely to sign up, the smaller the population you have sign up, the more likely it is that it is less healthy, sicker people who are going to draw on that insurance more, so the cost per person is going to go up dramatically. And second of all, it means that, uh, that, that uh, all of the, the revenue that's supposed to be generated for this thing may be insufficient to, to, to handle it, and the deficit will go up. The, we've been told that of those who have enrolled thus far, and obviously six is the number from the first day according to these you know, notes, not official, uh, but obviously it's gone up. And the president himself used the term thousands. Mark Thiessen, a former presidential speechwriter, was on saying when they say thousands, it means they couldn't say tens of thousands. Uh, but that was a, a week or so ago. And now we expect they have more people because we've been told that at least the Medicaid portion is swelling, that the vast majority of people signing up are Medicaid. Well, who pays for that? I mean, aren't we supposed to be getting money for that from the young, healthy people who are signing up for the exchanges, whose money we're going to take and who are going to be really, you know, easy to insure? Well, and look, Medicaid is second-class health care. It is... Uh, most doctors will not accept Medicaid patients. The reimbursement rates are way too low. Uh, you know, it's like getting a lottery ticket to get health care. It's not access to health care. And, in fact, we're going to find out at the end of the day, I suspect, when we get this first range of numbers, that the number of people who have applied for Medicaid far outstrips those who, who have applied for um, private insurance plans. Uh, private insurance plans are going to be better care. They're going to give you access to more doctors, better, higher quality facilities, are going to be willing to take your care. Medicaid is going to be second-class health care at best. And, and the question remains, who's going to pay for it? Because right now, uh, the federal government has agreed to pay for the expansion of the Medicaid roles in these states. And if, if you know, the money isn't there, what's that going to mean? New taxes? What? Where are they going to get it? Carl, thanks for being here.